This is a complete beginner's guide. In it, we dive into the world of phase failure relay connections. Join us as we explore this key electrical device. It ensures the smooth functioning and protection of your equipment. This is particularly true when phases fail or exceed voltage limits. We split the video into two parts. This provides a structured and deep look at phase failure relay connections. One basic principles of phase failure relay. Two phase failure relay in a control circuit, understanding the basic principles of phase failure relay. We use a three-pole MCB miniature circuit breaker, a phase failure relay, and a light. We provide a demo. It will enhance your understanding of how the relay works. We start by connecting the main three phase lines L1, L2, and L3 to the three poles of the MCB. This makes a secure electrical connection. The MCB serves the purpose of minimizing fault currents and ensuring circuit protection. The MCB directs the output to the L1, L2, and L3 terminals of the phase failure relay. At the top of the relay, you'll notice three more terminals labeled 1, 2, and 3. Terminal 2 is the common terminal. Terminal 3 is usually close to Terminal 2. Terminal 1 is usually open to Terminal 2. All the above terminals uphold their designated states under normal conditions. The voltages across L1, L2, and L3 are within the predefined limits set above and below the voltage limit. If you lose any phase, abnormal conditions will occur. If the phase order reverses or if the voltage is too high. In the video, we show these principles. We connect a phase line L1 to terminal 2 of the phase failure relay. This terminal is the common terminal. We connect a wire from terminal 3 of the relay to the light's phase terminal. The neutral wire connects to the light's neutral terminal. When we turn on the MCB and the conditions are normal, as discussed above. Terminals 2 and 3 of the phase failure relay connect. This allows the light to glow. In the abnormal condition, terminal 2 connects to terminal 1. Terminals 2 and 3 open, turning off the light. This demonstration showcases the basic principles of the phase failure relay. This continues our exploration of the basic principles of the phase failure relay. We introduce a practical setup using a magnetic contactor and a motor. There are no other switches or controls involved, making it simpler to understand. When we switch on the MCB, the magnetic contactor will operate. Power flows through the contactor. This lets the motor run if the conditions are normal, as discussed earlier. If all is good, the phase failure relay will keep terminals 2 and 3 connected. This will enable energizing the contactor's coil. This results in the motor running, as intended. But, an abnormal condition causes this. It could be a lost or reversed phase. This happens when the voltage exceeds the set limits. Terminal 2 and 3 of the relay will open, causing the magnetic contactor's coil to lose power and de-energize. As a result, the motor will not run, preventing any potential damage or hazards. By seeing this demo, you'll understand the phase failure relay. It works with a magnetic contactor. They protect and control the motor now. We will use the phase failure relay in a direct online starter. This starter has a three-pole MCB, a contractor, and an overload. It also has a three-pole MCB for the control circuit. It also has a phase failure relay. It has a start button and a stop button. It also has an overload trip indicator and a phase failure relay trip indicator. This circuit uses a three-phase motor. Let's start the connection. The main MCB connects to the three-phase lines L1, L2, and L3. The main MCB outputs connect to the L1, L2, and L3 terminals of the contactor. This three-phase line goes through the overload relay and connects to the motor now. We will start the control circuit. Three-phase lines from the output of the main MCB are connect to the control circuit MCB. The control circuit MCB connects to the L1, L2, and L3 terminals of the phase failure relay. It also connects to the common terminal 2 of the phase failure relay and the close terminal 3. This terminal 3 connects to terminal 95 of the overload relay and loops to 97 of the overload relay. Terminal 95 of the overload relay is next to terminal 96. Terminal 97 is normally open to terminal 98. A wire runs from terminal 96 to the stop push button. Terminal 96 is normally closed and is part of the overload relay. The second terminal of the stop push button connects to the start push button. 
a wire runs from the second terminal of the start push button to coil terminal AE2 of the magnetic contactor. This video shows a wire from the second terminal of the stop push button. The normally open auxiliary contact of the magnetic contactor connects to it. The second terminal of this contact connects to coil terminal AE2 of the contactor a wire. A wire from terminal 1 of the phase failure relay connects to one indicator. This indicator glows when the phase failure relay tripped due to any abnormality. A wire from terminal 98 of the overload relay connects to second indicator. This indicator glows when the overload relay tripped due to overload. In the last, connect the neutral wire to the A1 terminal of the magnetic contactor. This wire loops to the phase failure. An overload tripped indicators here as T control circuit is complete. If you found this video helpful, like it. Also, share it and subscribe for more info. Thanks for watching my video.